Think about it, he's like, oh, Frank said he could do it? <laughs> oh, why did you say that in the first place? Oh, right. Sweet. Kind of, yeah. Artist studio area where they had like these sculptures that were like 200,000 sculptures like around the tree and the arbor. Okay, so we're starting on a new build today. We're actually doing another chosen table. We've done, this would be the third table I've built. Um, if you've been with the channel for a while, you know that I had the opportunity to build a table for the TV series, The Chosen, and it has been a popular table among clients. People have seen it and ordered it, and it's a fun table to build. And this is going to be an interesting one because we're going to build it out of live oak, which is an incredibly difficult wood to work with. Um, it's super hard. The grain kind of interlocks and intertwines, and it's just no one really built furniture out of it. And the client really wanted it. So I'm the idiot who decided to go buy it and use it. So we're going to give it a shot. I went to the sawmill yesterday, picked up four slabs. So we've got two on the ground right here. These are going to make up our tabletop. We're going to do something really cool with these to make these uh, kind of straighten out and get the best yield out of them. Uh, I'll share that with you here in a second. And then we've got two slabs here. The game plan is to core up most of the table base with white oak, regular white oak. You know, it's not cost effective and it just doesn't work well to try to make the whole base out of live oak. So we'll core up most of the pieces with the white oak. We have blanks glued up back here. Robert glued them up yesterday. So this is 12 quarter white oak. We've set them in the clamps. They're ready to go. And we'll skin those with the live oak. So I'm gonna basically try to cut veneers out of these and um, glue it onto the, to the white oak cores and we'll have a really cool face with this live oak and you can see we got this really nice kind of crotch here so we're going to go for that area for the uprights let me take you over to the computer i want to show you the design kind of show you what i've got in mind so here's a look at the cad drawing um in fusion 360 here this is the upright you got the tenons up here what we can do is just skin from shoulder to shoulder so this will save some yield on our materials these are two inch tenons so we don't need to worry about adding four inches to the live oak because that's in the core material. So we're just gonna focus on cutting veneers to fit this face. The foot right here is gonna get veneered both faces and the upright. So that is what we're gonna start working on. We're gonna cross our fingers, fire up the Oliver and hope that we can cut these veneers. I'm just here for emotional <laughs> moral support, man. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do the cutting. Yeah, okay. absolutely. I'm not, I'm not doing any cutting. <laughs> This one. Are you sure? I know for a fact. Okay. Oh gosh. Okay, so I've shared this before. I actually shared this in one of our la previous videos on the conference table, but I think it's a helpful little tip. Dividers are a great tool. We need to get four veneers out of this blank, so I'm going to use the dividers. I've got a little bit of a funky spot here where it drops down, so <clears throat> I'm going to scale it off of that thinnest part. And I can set these on here, step it off if I can do it with one hand. Try my best. There's one, two, three, four. So now I can take these over to my fence and my blade and set them on here and set my fence to the back side of the blade using these dividers. Okay, so we're all set up, got the fence on, everything's square, got it fit to where 
the spacing at the top, same at the bottom, so everything's squared, everything's good. A little bit anxious about this. I've been told this is a bad idea. Um, a couple things could happen here. So one is this is incredibly dense hardwood. Um, I don't know how well the saw is going to cut, how straight it's going to cut. I think the Oliver's up to the task. Um, but the other thing too is this, it, there's a, probably a fair amount of tension in this live oak. Um, so we don't know what happens if when we resaw, we might, it might potato chip, like just bow up or you just don't know until you cut it. So I'm just kind of crossing my fingers at this point, hoping for the best. I think we're going to be all right. The only way to know is to give it a shot. All right, so I'm stoked. That works really well, actually. I didn't. I thought I'd have more, a lot more issues with it. It cut really slow, and it was a little wavy. It wasn't as clean as a lot of the uh, veneers that I cut, but uh, it got the job done. You can see these are the last few veneers. These are the foot supports here. So you know they're a little wavy, not great, but we'll be able to clean them up on the Y belt, which is what Robert's doing right now. He's running those skins through, and we'll get them all flushed up and flat. Next step is to load up the core right here on the CNC and cut out the profile. And we can also cut out the mortise. It won't cut all the way through. This is two and uh, three eighths. So uh, we'll cut, I don't know, about two inches and then we'll come back and flush trim the rest. Uh, so it'll save us quite a bit of time. There's still more to do after it comes off the CNC, but it'll get the bulk of the work done for us. Okay, so gearing up to lay up these veneers on the uprights. We've got them all set up here. I've let them sit and acclimate a little bit here in the shop, mostly to get them to the same acclimation, so to speak, to the cores, to what they're getting glued to. Um, they're still gonna move regardless, but at least um, these were in the shop for probably a week. And you know these have been in the shop now for probably four or five days. So hopefully they're all kind of equal equalized to the relative humidity in the shop, although that changes a lot, but I want them to be the same, right? So I know where they were coming from. They were probably in a lot drier environment than they are here. It's been pretty rainy and muggy here. So I think we've got enough time. Now I'm gonna lay these on with some tight bond too. This is easy enough, really good glue, and we'll do a great job. The good thing about using tight bond too as well is it's a little softer glue line, so it allows for a little bit of flexibility um, these are essentially the same species. You've got white oak and white oak, but they do have different percentage of movement. Uh, what we want to look for is the difference in um, the shrinkage, the percentage of green dimension from green to oven dry. So that just kind of gives you a general idea of how much this particular species will shrink, um, both on the tangential, which is going to be your flat sawn, and radial, which is going to be your quarter sawn. 
So we can find oaks down here. We've got a white oak is 10.5 on your flat sawn, and then a live oak is 9.5. So you got about a 1% difference. It's pretty large, pretty small. So I, I feel pretty confident about these being able to move together. Now, this is obviously um, not perfectly accurate because this is fairly flat sawn. You got flat sawn here, then you go into radio, then you go to flat. So it's not, it's not perfect flat sawn board. And in the relation to the grain to this one, this is kind of wild and figured. So they're going to be different. And that's one of the reasons why I want to use a type on kind of give a little bit of flexibility there. We're really close. I think we're going to be safe. This is a great reference for anyone who builds furniture. You got to have this book in your shop. I pre drilled a hole here. So when we lay these on here and I've marked them all off, they're all ready to go. Um, they'll be right over the mortise and we can come back with a flush trimming bit and just flush that out. And then we'll come back and flush all the profiles. All this gnarliness, a lot of that was gonna come out. Really what we want is this beautiful kind of crotch figure in here. Let's jump in and get these in the bag. Okay, so yesterday we got all the veneers cut for the base. We've got the profiles cut out for the uprights and for both the support and the foot. This morning I want to get on the two slabs for the top, go ahead and try to straighten those out as I talked about earlier, and um, hopefully get on the progress of gluing them up. There's a lot of filling to do on these. I don't know why Mayor chooses to sleep on these. What are you doing, bud? Hey, why are you sleeping there? It's the hardest spot in the shop. We got all these cracks, you know, it's the best, that's one thing you can, one great thing you can do with epoxy is just fill all the cracks, the voids, and there's quite a few in this, and pretty typical of live oak to have, you know, these little surface checks in it, stuff like that. It's difficult wood to dry and not get that stuff. So um, the sooner we can get on that, the better, because that can be quite the process. So first step in this is gonna be to cut out that pie. I talked about this earlier. Make a cut there, make a cut there, then we're gonna fold this back, glue it back together, and then we'll be able to straight line this edge and we'll have much better use of our wood and material. I have a question. Yeah. How, do you, how did you determine the angle? It's 90. It's 90 to a straight line right here. 90 to that straight line, 90 to that straight line. I see. So when you fold it on itself, that, that should become straight. straight. Or close to straight. Yeah, that's okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Mayor, what do you think? Well, yeah. Are you disturbing your peace? Well, it's a wood shop, Mayor. Yeah, right. That's how it goes. He's out there trying to dig a hole to sleep in dirt. <laughs> I guess he gave up on that.
All right, so that's how that works out. So you can see how much straighter we are now. Um, they do look slightly, no, I don't know what the word is, a little deformed looking, but this one actually lined up really well. Sapwood to the heartwood looks great. This one's pretty close, a little bit off there. But what's gonna happen now is I needed about 40 inches in table width and I've got about 19 to 20 across the whole length of these. Whereas when we had it curved, we weren't gonna be able to get that 19 to 20. So in here in the middle is gonna be 19, but I can almost cut, I can almost cut this kind of trashy area out. So that whole limb there is gonna come off on both sides. We might have a little bit of it in there, but we can fill that. So the next step here is to go up to the table, get a router bit of straight edge and get really clean cuts on all these domino and then we'll put the clamps on them and glue them up. Ow, finger, hurt. <laughs> okay, so it's Saturday, I'm in the shop, trying to get a little work done. Um, we've got the slabs glued up yesterday. I pulled them out of the clamps already and I've already started putting epoxy in them. So this is gonna be a long process. I did cut them too. So you can see we've basically got two roughly averaging out 19 to 20 inch wide boards to make up our tabletop. Uh, what's up, bud? I, I wanna button my pants. Oh, your pants came unbuttoned? Yeah. Okay, let me help you out. The boys have been in and out of the shop. It's weekend, so you kinda of have to watch them. Gave them some slingshots to play with. That'll keep them busy. I think they'll do all right with that. So far, I haven't had any accidents or crying. Cross our fingers. They're shooting little teeny like soft clay bullets, so, and they can't shoot them very well, so I feel pretty good about it. Basically what I do is I tape off the bottom and try to fill as many of these cracks as we can. You're looking at the bottom of this one. We're filling it from the bottom. So yeah, that's basically where we're at. A little weekend work, getting this knocked out. Um, we'll get them on the sander, hopefully get them glued up first thing next week.
was that? Things just threw sparks everywhere. Oh, there's a screw in it. That's a bummer. Dang. It's a pretty big screw. I'm just going to push through now. I've already done the damage. for your help getting it it's all together I feel old today man like everything in my body's aching feel that way I think we have to pick up on this one because if we slide it everything okay. will just collapse I'm gonna have to cut the ends again, so I'll just shake a little bit more. Okay, a quick update. Uh, fortunately, man, I missed filming all the joinery for this. Man, that's loud. Joe Press. Um, I got away from us a little bit. Um, we, I'll show you the joinery for sure. We haven't glued anything up. Sometimes the idea with the joinery is to get most of the way with the machines. It's really quick and then finish, clean off, finish off with hand tools, fit things. And we had some shoulders that were a little out of square on our upright here um, that we had to come back and kind of deal with. It's really hard to cut square, this, this length square shoulders all the way around on a table saw. You gotta get everything dialed in just right. So we got all that fixed. Um, we got uh, basically everything cut out here, our tenons. The way this works is, oh my gosh, that's squeaky, dude. <laughs> Uh, we've got a so basically we're doing a breadboard. I'm gonna let this kind of float and move in here. So we got this one's gonna get glued. That goes into this. These two 
are the outside tenons, so everything's going to get drawboard and pinned in place. And that's what Rob's working on right now. He is drilling holes, making, um, making a lot of noise. That's all right. This is dry fitted together. He's got this one drilled out. You can see I'm just really pumped. It's upside down. Um, so you're looking at the foot here. Let me just turn it around real quick. Since we got to see it like it's supposed to be. Oh my gosh, it's heavy, dude. Yeah, so there it is. Um, we're gonna do some sanding on this because our shoulder's a little bit too small here. I want more of a reveal on that. Uh, we'll, we, we're gonna fill all these little cracks with epoxy. Really easy to fill this because you're only filling that deep. They've already actually filled this side. This is gonna be the front show side. And you can just see that's, that's looking pretty awesome. I'm really excited about how this is coming together. He's gonna drill holes. What we'll do is we'll transfer these holes onto our tenon. You've seen me do this in my videos in the past and then we'll drill out the tenons, offset them just a little bit so we get that draw bore effect where when you hammer the pin, it's gonna pull it down. I've gotta go turn pins on the lathe and then we've got a ton of sanding to do to just clean up all these edges, make them look pretty and nice and um, then we can glue up. So we're getting there. Sorry I missed the joinery. Uh, you saw me cut the mortises on the CNC. That's how we did all the mortises. That even caused me some issues. Somehow, um, <laughs> well, somehow we've got two different size mortises on the, from the feet to the supports. The feet are at one inch. The supports were at inch and an eighth. And then somehow these got a little off center. So a lot of little mistakes on this one. I'm still learning the CNC. Um, it's like a very precise, expensive machine that takes a lot of understanding to run properly. So eventually I'm gonna get there. We're gonna, I'm gonna jump on the lathe, turn some pins, and hopefully we'll get caught up here. matches it. I don't know what I was thinking. But... I can do this. I can get the shot and help you out. Okay, so a quick update on this table here. We've got it all glued up, as you could tell. Rob added these braces in yesterday. We just cut out a pocket in these. They just dropped down in there. Really wouldn't normally do this, but I wanted to have these on this table since we put a seam in the middle of the top. 
just to give it a little bit more support. Wouldn't want someone to stand on the table and have it split in half, which I don't think it would, but I definitely know it won't now that we have this angle iron in here. This has got one coat of oil, so we pre-oil all the parts before we glue this up. Just makes it easier to clean up the glue squeeze out when we assemble. Um, with exception to this through tenon, we'll have to clean that up and oil it. I'm working on the top. So this table is going to have 12 inch extensions off each end. And I kind of went going this afternoon on a system where I made this little jig and we were going to cut a sliding dovetail into the end of the table, cut one here, one here, and then add the mating dovetail key to the leaf and it would just slide on this. But right before I started cutting it, I kind of realized this isn't going to work because the grain is oriented differently, right? So the leaf this would be long grain the leaf the grain runs this way the tabletop the grain runs this way so this is going to move and swell this way but it won't do that on the leaf so if i had done this good chance six seven months from now the client would have called me and said hey i'm trying to put the leaf in it doesn't work and i would have been like what do you mean it doesn't work and i would have driven out there and i would have seen exactly what i did wrong and i would have looked like a complete idiot in front of the client so i'm glad i caught it what we're going to do now is instead of trying to slide it in from this direction i'm going to put the dovetail on the end of the table so i've already cut a, a little test piece and honestly i have been racking my brain a lot on how i want to do this and this was one of my first ideas but i talked myself out of it because i was too worried that this might get too fragile and break but after cutting it and seeing it i still think it's going to break i think it's going to be pretty strong especially across the the 40 inches of width um and also it's live oak which if you've ever messed with live oak, it's it just it's very very strong like if you wanted to split it You can't split it. You can't you split it with an axe or a wedge It's just the grain is all interlocked. So I feel fairly confident that That can hold the leaf now. I will add some bracing just to play it safe um, But what I want to do now that I have this kind of figured out is stand the tabletop up run the groove on both ends and then mm, I will add the key to the edge of the leaf we won't cut it into the leaf we'll just screw it on and then um i want to slide it in there just see how it works i also have to be consider the fact that the tabletop's going to move potentially bow and so you know ideally what i try to do is make these fit really nice and smooth but we want to probably leave it a little bit loose that way if the table does bow a little bit you can still kind of slide that leaf in we don't want it binding and not not going in so with that in mind, I'm going to cut these and then we'll, we'll put the dovetail on the leaf and see what we got.
Okay, so I wanna give you a real quick kind of overview of the table, kind of share with you a little bit of the details of it. It's got the leaves attached to it right now. So the way we did these leaves is we uh, cut a sliding dovetail in the end of the table, and then we added the dovetail to the leaf. You wouldn't want to use, you wouldn't want to cut the dovetail into the leaf because it's not quite as strong that way. It could snap off and break. Here you've got a, both a mechanical with screws and a glue joint. It makes it much stronger. And to make it even stronger, we added this piece underneath here uh, to kind of help keep it level. With the dovetail alone, it really wants to sag like this. This piece helps keep it level with the table and just guides it on a little bit easier. This piece is a veneered piece of plywood, so that gives it even more strength. If we used just a board uh, alone that with the grain running this way, the, I think there's a chance that that, could, that board could split if you put a lot of weight on this. It's probably unlikely, but just to play it safe, we use this plywood with the veneer and that's definitely not gonna split or break. Um, one of the things I love about this too is the way the ends taper off with that live edge. We kind of kept that on there. So this is a little bit shorter uh, leaf on this end where this is the full 40 on this end and you've got the full width leaf here. A little bit of a new process for me. These are fairly thick veneers. Um, so far, we've had quite a few humidity changes throughout the last couple of weeks, and I haven't, we haven't seen any issues with these coming unglued or delaminating or cracking or anything like that. So I'm feeling good about that, and I love the way we've got that kind of crotch figure and grain down here on these uprights. And they're actually book matched, which you would never notice unless I showed you, but this one, when you look at it, matches that one down there and vice versa. So it's a really cool effect that, you know, no one's gonna catch, but I'm gonna share it with you. I think it's really, this, the, these are kind of the coolest, I think this looks really amazing. Look at the kind of the crotch figure coming up out of there. Looks awesome. And then obviously we've got the, the Tusk tin in here with the wedge coming down through it. And we used Live Oak for the wedge. So it's just an all around great looking table. And I'm very excited to share this with the client. So like I said, we're gonna take this to Fredericksburg, Texas, deliver it this afternoon. I don't generally take the camera with me for deliveries because I just think it's kind of strange to bring a camera into clients' homes, unless it's someone I know. Uh, but I will leave you with some really cool photos and video of the table finish. Hopefully we'll get some of it in the house. As always, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Leave me a comment, let me know what you think of the table and stay tuned. We got some really cool content coming your way.